Hi and welcome to MRTV Live episode number four. As you know, MRTV Live is the weekly live stream here on Mixed Reality TV. Unfortunately, last week I couldn't be here because I was on vacation in Portugal. But tonight I'm here and I'm so looking forward to tonight's stream. It's going to be a very cool and interesting show. I'm going to talk about the following topics. So let me check that out for you. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the discounted Samsung Odyssey. It's on discount right now. You can get it for $399. Then we're going to talk about the Oculus Go, the upcoming standalone headset from Oculus. And we're also going to talk about the Vaunt, which are Intel's upcoming AR glasses. Very, very exciting, very interesting, and you're going to learn so much about them in this show. Then we're going to talk a lot about Sprint Vector, the incredible game. Oh, uh, we're going to talk a lot about it, and later we're also going to play the game together. It's going to be awesome. And, well, there are so many other topics that, well, you will see about them later. All coming up. Yeah, hi and welcome here at Mixed Reality TV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here and you're just as excited about VR and AR as I am, then subscribe to this channel now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Yes, welcome to MRTV Life number four. I love these live streams. And actually, when I was in Portugal last week, I was in a hotel. It was a very nice hotel, but the quality of the internet was not really up to speed. So unfortunately, I couldn't bring you that live stream, but well, we are all here together now and I'm so happy about that. So if you're not watching this live, if you're watching this as a recording, please do check out the description under this video because I'm going to time code all the topics that I'm going to talk about here in this live stream. So if you want, you can directly jump to those topics or well, you can simply stay with me here in the live stream and well, get some of the interaction. It's going to be lots of fun too. So what is special about MRTV Live about this weekly show? Well, of course, as you can tell, it is live. This is definitely one of the cool things and it's not just about me talking about the latest VR and AR news, the news that happened in last week and the, la the week before. Um, it's also about talking with you, giving you the opportunity to directly chat with me, to directly talk with me and discuss the topics that I'm presenting to you. So this is the speciality of this show. And how do you do that? Well, you simply go to the MRTV Discord server the Discord server is an incredible free resource that you can simply reach by clicking on the link that I put into the description below. It is fantastic. You can directly chat there with me and the awesome community. Over the last few weeks, we have amassed like more than 300 people who are on that server. And well, there's never a boring moment. There are always like-minded people who love VR and who love to help people, who love to engage in um, discussions so do check out the mrtv discord server it's a free resource and simply click on the link in the description below to go there and for this live stream i've opened the live stream channel so go to the live stream channel if you directly want to interact with me all right so simply go to the live stream channel and during the show if you say at sebastian then I'm gonna see it here. I have a second screen here now. I'm getting more professional here. So um, yeah, this is really good. So if you write at Sebastian, then I know it's for me. So please, if you want to directly talk with me, use the at Sebastian tag, then I will know, okay, that, that's something for me. And well, um, yeah, then I will read it out probably. If I can publish it, the things that you write and it's gonna be lots of fun. Yeah, so, Please go to the MRTV Discord server if you're live right now. If Even if you're not live right now, then also check it out. It's so much fun. It's a great server. Yeah. So good to see you all here live in MRTV live number four. So now, um, yeah, let's, I think I've said everything. Um, let me turn down the volume a bit so that you don't hear 
the don't hear the um, notifications so much. And now we can start. <laughs> okay, let me change to another view. So let me change to here. Okay. Can you see? Yes, you can. Okay, great. All right, then. <laughs> Let's start with our first topic here. And before I start, let me quickly check. Okay, hello to all the people who are watching this right now. <laughs> yeah, ZK Nightlight. It's fun, right? Do you like that? It's pretty cool, right? Okay, but now let's get to the news. All right, so like not last week, but the week before there was this news on Upload VR and they reviewed the Samsung Odyssey. Finally, it took a long while. As you know, it came out in, um, in November last year and just now Upload VR has reviewed the Samsung Odyssey and they say it sits among the best VR headsets out there. Well, not really news for us on MRTV, but simply let me read out their final assessment, final recommendation, worth it. Overall, the Odyssey sits among the best VR headsets on the market, offering a resolution improvement and visible, not visible in a Rift or Vive today and greater convenience in setup. With Vive Pro likely to require a hefty premium, Odyssey's integrated audio and microphone combined with a boost in visual quality make it a tempting purchase for the near future. All right, so this is what Upload VR said. And of course, I can simply agree. As you know, I imported the Odyssey from the US to Germany when it was still not discounted. So I, pay, I paid the full price and also I had to pay all the import tax and all this stuff. But I'm really happy that I did it because indeed the Samsung Odyssey is definitely the best Windows MR headset. And you could argue that it's at the moment it's the best VR headset out there simply because the resolution is awesome. It is very simple to use, gives you lots of convenience. The tracking is not as good as Vive, of course, but it's still really, really good. So that's interesting that they have just now come up with this review because I did the review like a month ago. And this is actually one of um, my most viewed videos on YouTube. And probably because of that review, you found this channel might be. So all of you in the chat, what do you think about the Samsung Odyssey? Do you have it or do you want to buy it? Because that is the next news item that I want to talk about. So of course, if you're watching this channel, then you know that of course, but the Samsung Odyssey is discounted. It's discounted to $399. $399 is a really good price. So the price is discounted from $499. So $499 is the original price. And I still think even at $499, it is a good purchase. It is really a nice purchase, but at $399, this is really incredible. So if you live in the States and if you're considering to get a new VR headset, if you don't already have a VR headset, if you don't already have the Lenovo Explorer or the Rift or the Vive and you want to get into VR, then this is a great headset. Upload said it. I say it. Lots of people love this headset. It has the highest resolution at the moment with 1,600 times 1,440 pixels per eye. Really nice. It has IPD adjustment. The only Windows MR headsets, headset that has IPD adjustment. It has headphones and microphones. And well, it has a great FLV as well. So this is a great headset. And for $399, this is a great purchase. Yeah, definitely. So where can you get this? You can get this from samsung.com. You have to go 
to the US website. If you're not in the States, you cannot get it from Samsung.com, then you have to use a service called Big Apple Buddy, for example, and they will help you to purchase it. And then, um, yeah, they will send it to you wherever you are. That's how I did it. Okay, ZK Nightlight says, Sebastian, if we could have the Odyssey officially in Europe at that price, would be a must have. I wonder how much it will stay among the best considering the upcoming headsets. What do you think? Okay, well, I think it's going to compete against the Vive Pro, of course. However, the Vive Pro is very, is most probably going to cost around 800 or even thousand dollars for the complete package. So it's going to be very, very expensive. So price wise, I think the Odyssey will win. However, I also believe that the Vive Pro is going to be a dream because I love the HTC Vive. I really love it. Even though the display kind of, kind of looks dated by now, I still see myself going back to it to try out new games because simply the, the tracking is so good and for the immersion that is so important that the tracking is perfect and the tracking is simply unbelievable with the Vive. So my only gripe that I have with the Vive is the display. The display kind of looks old right now with the screen door effect and stuff. So that is not nice. So when the Vive Pro has this updated display, it's going to be kind of nearly the perfect headset. So I think in the direct comparison, it's going to be a bit tough for the Odyssey to win against the Vive Pro simply because the tracking. But still, for the normal user, for the normal consumer, I think the Odyssey is just perfect because it's much simpler for them to use it for the normal uh, for the normal user. So if you buy the Odyssey now, you're going to have fun for the next couple of years for sure. It's gonna st stick around and it's really an awesome device and I can recommend it to you a lot, a lot. So Ghost Camp says, I didn't get the Samsung cause of its high price and I wanna use my own headset and I think HMDs will evolve more this year. So I didn't want to pay for a high price Okay, now everything's gone. High price. So I got the Dell visor just now. Okay, good. Ghost Camp, hi. Welcome to the MRTV Discord server. Great to have you here. The Dell is also a solid headset. It's very well built. And well, the heads up display is great. Uh, the, the flip up display. And yeah, well, for me, I preferred the Lenovo Explorer, as you probably know. But um, yeah, the Dell is also nice. And for sure, it's cheap and it's you, you're also going to have fun. <laughs> I'm not sure, do you already have the device? And how do you like it? Please do tell me. Yeah, so, and how about the Pimax? Yeah, of course, the Pimax is probably going to rock. <laughs> it's probably going to rock all the headsets and I'm so much looking forward to get it. As you know, I'm one of the guys um, who's going to get the Pimax 8K early. I'm one of this early test group that gets the Pimax 8K early. So I'm going to tell you all about the Pimax 8K. Once I get it, I'm going to compare it with the Vive. I'm going to compare it with the Odyssey. I'm going to compare it with the Rift. There's, there's gonna be so many videos with the, uh, with, the, with the Pimax and lots of comparisons. So yeah, this is going to be good. Cheers. Yeah. So, that's it for this news item. That's it for uh, for the H and the Odyssey. Now we're going to talk about the next news item, and the next news item is the Oculus Go, the upcoming standalone headset from Oculus, which is only going to cost one hundred and ninety nine dollars and you will be able to use it without anything, without your phone, you don't need a PC tethered to it. It is fantastic. So this has just leaked or not just, it was uh, news of uh, the week before last week. So this picture of the retail packaging has just leaked. And as you can tell here, it says 1000 plus apps, games, and movies. Wow, so there's going to be lots of lots of content there. It's a great argument uh, for lots of people to get it. Thousand plus apps. So of course, all of the Gear VR apps will run on the Oculus Go. So 
they have a great library of great games and also movies and all kinds of stuff. So that is kind of an awesome value proposition, don't you think? <laughs> what do you think about the Oculus Go and what do you think about um, their retail packaging and talking about thousand plus apps, games and movies? Probably they all uh, uh, movies are also included in, these, uh, in this thousand number. So what do you think? Are you going to get it for uh, $199? So um, Ian Hamilton, the person who wrote this article says, I'm curious how many of those, of those thousand plus apps, games and movies are movies. Oculus sells movies that can be viewed in a virtual theater and the company saw fit to secure the rights so you could invite friends over to your virtual theater and watch something with you. Wow, I think this is really incredible. Okay, for us, we know it, right? We, we have like um, big screen and all these things where we can invite people, but for people who had never been into a VR and this is going to be like the first experience, for them, this might be really, really incredible. Just think about it, you, you get this, and um, yeah, you can watch a movie on this huge theater and then you can invite your friends over to your virtual world and watch that together. What do you think about this feature? I think this feature is pretty, pretty incredible. What do you guys think about that? So let me see what you guys um, have to say about that. So ZK Nightlight says, Zuckerberg is right. I can see this sells tons of units to literally everyone. Totally agreed, ZK Nightlight. Zuckerberg is so aggressive, he's doing exactly the right thing. It's perfect, he's doing it just right. And that's why I think this is going to sell like hotcakes. Okay, then um, KW71 says the Vive Pro will have better display, but any news about battle lenses? Okay, that was for the other news item. Um, no, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, um, uh, Loritz B says, I just feel it's a stepping stone for the mainstream, but personally would never buy it over a WinMR. Lauritz, I totally agree with you. This is going to sell like hotcakes and it's going to be a great stepping stone. Like, um, well, lots of people are going to get this just for the price. Just think about it, $199, everything is inside. You don't need a uh, daydream ready phone. Those phones are expensive. You don't need a Samsung Galaxy. Those are quite expensive too. You just need this Oculus Go and for $199, for many people, it's going to be an, impu an impulse buy. And then in this year, VR is going to go to the mainstream. It's going to go to the mainstream thanks to um, Ready Player One, the movie. So there's lots of lots of VR action and just think about it. People are going to watch the movie Ready Player One and then they think, oh God, I need to get into this whole thing. How do I do this? And yeah, they will simply go probably for the $199 Oculus Go. Well. So yeah, so the Oculus Go, definitely very, very interesting. And uh, push the button says, it's porno, <laughs> Oculus Go. <laughs> yeah, you know, so um, as you probably know, a um, couple of uh, weeks back, I went to Barcelona to visit uh, an adult entertainment shooting. <laughs> And I talked with the head of the adult entertainment studio. Was very interesting. You will hear all about this on the channel. And in that interview, we also talked about the Oculus Go. And he said he loves the Oculus Go. It's the perfect device to watch adult entertainment in VR. And he's so much looking forward for the Oculus Go. And he's so sure that, um, yeah, that the numbers for his adult entertainment studio are going to go up. So really, really, really interesting. So, okay. Run Dune says, Sebastian, what is the FLV of the Oculus Go? Any idea? Yes, 
This is going to be the next news item, Randoom, very well. Brandon, hi, good to see you. Hi Brandon, greetings to Australia. Push the button, says, I think it will flop. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, Loritz agrees with the prediction. Sound Loves says, Hi Sebastian, tried the PSVR on my head today. Seems like a major light leaks around the nose and even above the eyes there is some rubber, which is not 100%. How is the Odyssey compared to this? So it has nothing to do now with the Oculus Go, but I will still answer to Sound Loves just because this is such an awesome live show. Um, yeah, so there's not much light, light leakage on the Odyssey. It's it's really pretty good. They're doing a great job, so I don't see any light leakage over the over the eyes and um, around the nose. There's also no light leakage because they have these nose flaps. Those nose flaps are a bit annoying, though. Not so nice, I think. But um, overall, there is not much uh, light leakage. So this is definitely okay. Okay, so, great. All right, so now we're going to go to the next news item. So, Randoon has just asked about the FOV of the Oculus Go, and we're going to talk about that now. So, Android Central has done a um, comparison between the Oculus Go versus the Samsung Gear VR. And there's one thing that came to my attention and it kind of made me a bit sad, I have to admit it. And unfortunately, that is about the Oculus Ghost FOV. Let's talk, let's have a look at this. I really hope that this is not true. I really hope that this is a mistake because it says here that the Oculus Go has a field of view of 90 degrees. That is very, very unfortunate. If that is true, that is like looking through binoculars. That is like looking through those toilet paper rolls. It's not fun. 90 degrees is bad. And once I read this, I thought like, okay, probably it's not this impulse buy that I thought about, you know? Before I thought, like, okay, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this for sure on day one. But um, yeah, with 90 degrees, it's uh, it's just such a pain because, well, I'm very used now to 110 degrees, right? With all the devices that I'm using, but 90 degrees, ah, oh, that is really, this is really a pain. Honestly speaking, I really hope that <laughs> that is going to be a mistake from Android Central, but we don't know. Now push the button says, okay, that's why it's going to flop. <laughs> Yeah, so 90 degrees is not good. 90 degrees is around the same field of view that the original Daydream had, the Daydream View 1. So I really wonder why this is the case, though. Because, um, well, the, the thing is, they can build this device from scratch, right? So. The Gear VR, you never knew, okay, what kind of phone other people are going to put inside or for the Daydream, what kind of Daydream ready phone are the people going to put inside. But for this, they knew it from the very beginning, they can design it so you can get the maximum FOV. So why they only have an FOV of 90, if this is true, this is really, really a problem. Now, um, yeah, Brandon agrees and then Cyrus says the mainstream audience won't care or know the difference. Yeah, Cyrus, this is true. This is a good point. I totally agree with you. So probably the, the normal mainstream con consumer is not, going to, um, is not going to care about that. That's true. But um, yeah, we are going to care about it, right? And the reviewers are probably going to care about it. I can tell you, I'm going to buy it, obviously, just to show it to you and just to review the shit out of it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't think this is so... This is, this is really a bit unfortunate. And I can tell you, when I, was, uh, when I read this news, 
I was a bit sad. So, um, yeah. So that is um, a bit of an unfortunate news. Cheers. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to buy it. And what about you guys? Are you going to buy the Oculus Go? Please do let me know in the in um, on the live stream. All right. Please do let me know on the live stream channel on the MRTV Discord server. So for all of you who are watching this right now, please join the MRTV Discord server. It's a great Discord server. <laughs> it's a very, very good Discord server. And I really like it and it's really fun to interact with you guys. So yeah, the Discord is great. Yeah, so I can only say that I'm not so not so happy about this part and the thing is so as you know this is going to uh, compete against the lenovo mirage solo the standalone headset from um from uh, from lenovo and um this is going to run daydream now this is going to be more expensive yes so far that that we know but um the thing is the Lenovo Mirage Solo has a much higher FOV. So let me show you that. Okay, we also built the headset's display for immersive VR engagement with an incredible 110 degree field of view. So you can see more of what's around you. So of course, this is much more, uh, uh, this is much more um, expensive, right? With $399, but it has an FOV of 110 degrees 20 degrees more than the oculus go and of course it has six degrees of freedom so the lenovo mirage solo looks more and more interesting however i totally agree with all of you guys the normal consumer will just look at the price the normal consumer will not know what is 90 degrees FOV uh, as compared to 110 degrees FOV? The normal user will not know what is six degrees of freedom, what is three degrees of freedom. And I don't think that Google knows how to communicate that well enough. But I totally trust Mark Zuckerberg that he is going to push out the Oculus Go to the mainstream audience. And I think it's still going to be good enough for the normal users. All right, okay, so now we can go to the next news item. And the next news item is, we're going to talk about inside out tracking. We're going to talk about occipital's lighthouse level inside out tracking system. So now we've just been talking about the standalone devices, right? So. The standalone devices, they don't need base stations, just like the Windows MR devices don't need base stations. Everything is inside out. So you have these cameras within the Windows MR headsets and these cameras check the environment and um, based on that data, they know where they are in space. So that is definitely really good. However, as you know, the Windows MR tracking is still not as good as the Lighthouse tracking. However, all the future upcoming headsets i mean not not now not this year but in the in the longer run like 2019 are going to have inside out tracking like the oculus santa cruz and all the headsets which are coming and occipital is a company that is doing inside out tracking and they're doing it so well that's actually as good as the lighthouse tracking so this is big news of course everything is going to go inside out and and uh, yeah this is just to show you how good this tracking is going to be so let's let me show you that so hands on with occipital's lighthouse level inside out tracking system let me read a part of you the accuracy of tracking systems is the real battlefield on which the vr wars will be won from the lighthouse tracking employed by htc and valve to power the vive to the cameras used by Oculus or inside-out systems already in use by Windows VR platform, 
there are a lot of avenues being explored. It's no secret that Inside Out is the ideal scenario so you can truly be untethered and portable. But the main issue is that most cases the Inside Out tracking systems are, aren't as accurate as the external sensor counterparts. Or if they are, they are likely too expensive for headset manufacturers to include. That's where Occipital comes in. So, this San Francisco based company has created an inside out tracking system of their own for VR and AR headsets that's about as efficient and accurate as the Vive's own Lighthouse system. Wow! So, this is an inside out tracking system which is as good as the Vive Lighthouse tracking system. And as you know, the Vive's Lighthouse tracking system is incredible. It's simply incredible. Wow! So, Roll says, Inside out as good as lighthouse tracking? Sign me up. Exactly, rolls. Exactly. So, this is incredible and I can't wait for it. But wait until you see the videos. So, there are, there are videos inside this, um, this thing and I'm going to show you those videos in a, in a bit. So, using this little device on the front of a VR headset, you can get full six degrees of freedom room scale tracking when paired with a backpack PC or wireless adapter you are un eliminated almost all restrictions on your ability to move around the world. Okay, I'm simply going to show you now a video of a hands-on of this occipital inside-out tracking. And please do let me know, do you think this is exciting? Okay, let me show you that right now. Here we are, we're testing our uh, Stereo Slam here at CES 2018. Vikas is trying it out. He's looking through the stereo camera feed. You're seeing the scene reconstructed here. So here, on this computer but you see you how fast everything is being tracked. And what the great thing about, it, about this is that Occipital is Vikas. also doing um, a death, Go crazy. death map. So it really knows what's around it's you. Still good. So it cannot just say where it is in space, it also maps the no, area. Yeah. So it will know, okay, here's the table and here is the wall. And you can use it for awesome AR applications. So this is really fantastic. And see how fast everything is done. Everything is done in real time that you see here. So this is really incredible. So all, all the things around this guy are being tracked perfectly in space. Yeah, Rolls likes it. Exactly. That looks amazing. Can't wait. The same here. But Can't Rolls, keep up with them. it's going to get better. <laughs> it's going to be much better. This is basically what people normally do. Loud it says, fuck. No matter oh, what I shouldn't have said this. <laughs> yes, so cool. Don't make me swear here. <laughs> I'm reading out everything that you write there when it has the at Sebastian tag. Make yourself dizzy. I'm going to throw <laughs> Okay. Am I back? Yes, I'm back. So this is pretty, pretty amazing, right? Now, um, the, what is even better, if you are, if you, if you want to make, if you want to make a headset using this, then check out the following. Sorry, dude. <laughs> okay, check out the following. The occipital tracking system is available completely for free up to 10,000 units for anyone that's making a consumer grade AR VR device. So if you're making an AR device or a VR device, let's say on Kickstarter, and let's say you're making 9,999 units, Occipital is going to give you this for free. That is kind of awesome, right? So once we reach um, here, let's say 500,000 subscribers on on Mixed Reality TV and once we'll think about some cool Kickstarter campaigns that we're going to do and yeah, probably we're going to do some AR or VR device, then we can probably get this occipital tracking for this future hardware <laughs> or any VR and AR um, startup that is thinking about making something really cool up to 10,000, they can get it for free. Wow. This is pretty awesome, right? So this, they, they see it as kind of um, investment, as some kind of um, 
yeah, investment into their own technology. But if you're making between 10,000 and 100,000 units, it'll run you $10 per unit. So still, for $10 per unit, you can get this kind of tracking in your future AR or VR device. Isn't that incredible? Um, or seven per unit, if over 100,000 in total. For products that cost above 700, it'll be 3% as well. Okay, so it's really cheap. This technology is not expensive. People, um, manufacturers can get this for around $7 on top of the price um, that they will need for, for the other part. So this is really, really incredible. Please do let me know in the live chat, what do you think about Occipital's tracking system? Yeah, so, so that is really, really cool. Um, yeah, but now let me show you something other, uh, another thing which is really great. So they already using this and then they're going to sell a device, an AR device. They, they, they are selling something, um, some um, VR headset where you put your iPhone or your Android device inside just like Daydream or Gear VR, which already uses this technology. Isn't that incredible? So this is something that you can buy very, very soon. So very soon you can buy something like Gear VR or um, Daydream. You simply put your 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 um, your phone inside, and you have really, really cool six degrees of freedom tracking. This is called the Occipital Bridge. So in addition to this tracking system, they showed me a demo of the iPhone-powered room scale AR headset, the Occipital Bridge. You can see our impressions of that video below. And I'm going to show you that video now. It's like three minutes or something, but it's really worth it to have a look. Please check this out. Today we're checking out Occipital's structure sensor and their new bridge headset, uh, where it's mobile positional tracking, six degrees of freedom, and uh, obstacle avoidance as well. Let's check it out. So what we've done mostly so far has only been software when it comes to VR. So you had to bring your own headset, whether it was a you know, an off-the-shelf mobile headset or whether you were just using an, a tablet or a phone. This time we're bringing a, a headset that uh, does everything really well. It has uh, a really nice design, it's lightweight, it's designed from the ground up to align all the optics in a great way. With Bridge, we give you a single unified experience that works well and allows you to easily develop mobile positionally tracked VR or, you know, maybe even cooler mixed reality. Cool. Oh, she went there, she jumped over the table and walked across. So that's a VR scene. Mm. So we can step in. I'm not sure if you can hear me well now, but isn't it just an awesome? Now it's positional track. Yeah. Positional track VR. Yeah. The controller is, is new, um, and, and it has a, oh it has a gyroscope I, and it has buttons, but um, the actual electronics is the same. What about you? Uh, but we're bringing better optics, we're bringing uh, a nice design which balances weight really well, um, an aluminum alignment system, and a ratchet system. So it's, but it's all mechanical, a really nice mechanical design. Uh, working alongside with the structure sensor. Ooh, it's underneath <laughs> the table now. Interesting. Wait, how? Oh, wow, that's cool. Can you do that again? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's actually kind of fun. I have a table at my apartment, um, like a dining table, and she can actually go underneath it because mm -hmm. it's tall enough. That was our first impressions of the bridge headset from Occipital with the structure sensor doing the tracking and the slam of the room. That was really cool. Six degrees of freedom, mobile positional tracking, as well as ox obstacle avoidance and mixed reality, pass through camera with photogrammetry scans of the room, all the terms that we like to throw out in VR, all included in one headset. Pretty cool, I'd say. Check upload VR for the article and check back for more. See you guys next time. All right, this is the occipital, occipital bridge. Now, isn't that truly incredible? So um, let me just check what you guys think. So Elia Sol says, would be interesting to get, but what about controllers? Probably it's just going to be your hands, <laughs> right? So I'm sure it can also track your hands. Also, Lauritz says it's gonna blow up. Yeah, I think so. Now, think about it. It's so cool. It looks very, very great. It looks like a very cheap AR system. 
Magic Leap probably going to cost above thousand dollars, but this here, I don't know about the price, but you know what? I'm going to get in touch with Occipital. I'm going to show them this live stream segment and I'm going to ask them if they can send me one of the Occipital bridges and I would love to show you that. This is truly incredible. I also love their inside out tracking technology. And um, yeah, so very, very, very interesting news. And yeah, everything is going to go inside out tracking. So forget about this um, um, base stations that we see now. This is going to go away and everything is going to be in your headset and it's going to be really, really nice. And we also have um, Mo Tenzin here, Mo Fun VR. Hi, good to see you here. Mo has a great German um, language VR channel that uh, for all the German speakers, I can very uh, warmly recommend to you. He does awesome gameplay videos. And for all the Germans here, I'm later I'm going to put the link to his channel in the description below. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. Now let's get to the next news item here. The next news item is also going to be about VR, I think. No, AR, okay, yes. The next news item is also going to be about AR and it's going to be about Google's web AR announcement is a boon for advertisers. So what is this news item about? All right, Google recently announced that it's bringing AR technology to desktop and mobile browsers to push augmented reality on the web for everyone. Users will be able to interact with 3D objects that are embedded into sites and place set objects into their own environment via tablet or phone cameras straight from the browser without launching an AR specific application. So what's going to happen very soon when you're browsing um, some website, for example, on your tablet or um, on your phone, probably there's going to be some AR enabled website. So like, like you can see here, you can, you can um, take this AR object out of this website and you can place it into your own reality with your phone, like with the camera. Now, this seems to be some, some kind of gadget, very gimmicky, but it could be really, really fun. And so let's say on the um, future um, MRTV website, um, yeah, I could put like a 3D animation character of myself and you could put myself into your living room <laughs> and take a picture of this. Isn't that your dream? Come, come on, admit it. <laughs> so this is going to, to be what's going to happen. Now, why does Google do such a thing? Let me, let me tell you that. So first of all, very important, they want to increase adoption of AR. So they want to make AR more accessible to users. They don't want people to have to download some app. They want to, they want, um, they want to allow people to directly get into AR from their browsers. That's what they say. But of course, actually, that is really good for their ad revenue because they can put ads there and they can sell ads. And for AR content creators, they can push their AdWords and AdSense um, ads onto AR. So they said they also want to ensure continued ad revenue from the web. Web has been a core of Google's DNA since its inception until now. More than 70% of Google's ad revenue comes from the web and more queries worldwide are for web searches. So of course they want to, um, yeah, they, they want to still be able to put their ads into AR um, for the future. And you know what? I don't think that's a bad thing, not at all. I think that is good. That is good news. Why? Because this will encourage content creators to think about really cool AR um, content that they wouldn't do if this was not possible like that. So I don't think that is a bad thing. No, not at all. I think that's a great thing because this is going to allow content creators to produce content because, well, probably they can earn some revenue from that AR content. Now, at the moment, we have no idea yet what's going to happen, but I'm sure the developers out there, they will come up with really awesome stuff 
which is going to be free of charge because they can earn money with the ad revenue that Google allows them to earn. So that's why I think that is a great news item. I think that is fantastic. And we're going to see lots of very cool stuff in the web soon, in the web that has to do with AR. So I think this is really an interesting news item. Yeah, so AR is going to be everywhere very soon. Not yet now, but this we are now in the beginning here. And ZK Nightlight, I, I'm really happy that always you put that nice, um, that nice icon there whenever I have a sip from my adult beverage. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, so how Web AR benefits advertising just the same thing that I said right now. So I think this is good. Um, Google is doing the first steps now to put um, AR more into the front light and very, very soon we're going to see much more of that happening. Great. So now the next news item is very, very cool. Wow. This is great. I was looking forward to tell you about Vaunt. Vaunt is Intel's smart glasses that don't make you look stupid. So Google Glass, nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it because it kind of yeah looked a bit strange. But the problem was it was super intrusive with these cameras, right? You felt like a creep. Whenever you went somewhere, people didn't like it because they thought they're being filmed. So that is a big, big problem. But um, yeah, okay, push the button says we're down. No, we're not down. It seems like we're working. Seems like the stream is working fine. For me at least, yeah. Okay, push the button says it's back, okay. <laughs> so with the Google Glass, yeah, you became some kind of glass hole, right? When you put this on, nobody liked you and it made you look stupid. But now Vaunt is here. Vaunt are Intel's smart glasses. And first of all, they don't make you look stupid. They look like normal glasses and they don't have um, they don't have um, those cameras in them. So nobody needs to feel bad when you wear them. It just could happen that you get some other information in your glasses. But um, yeah, it's not like intrusive. So this is really, really cool. But you know what? Let me read a bit and then let me show you the very, very cool video. So, Intel is making smart glasses that you won't be ashamed to wear on the train. Revealed by The Verge, Vaunt is a pair of glasses that offers basic contextual information to one eye without a bulky and unsightly piece of additional hardware fitted to them. Think of them as a refined Google Glass that may genuinely have a shot at changing our everyday lives. And now I'm going to show you a very, very cool video. It's a seven minutes long. I'm not going to show you the whole seven minutes. I'm only, only going to show you um, a short part of it. All right. So enjoy the video about Vaughn. And please do let me know in, in, the, um, in the live stream channel, what do you think about these glasses? What if smart glasses didn't make you look like a techno cyborg jerk? That's exactly what Intel is making. These smart glasses are called Vaunt, and they're completely different from what you're expecting. What's amazing about these glasses is they look normal, and they feel really light in my head. They only weigh about 50 grams. They're designed to do just one thing, show you simple, basic information in one of your eyes. It has this little red monochrome projector that shines an image on a holographic mirror thing, which then bounces it directly into my eyeball. So I don't have to focus on it. It's just sort of down there. But the best part is that if you're not looking just slightly down to the display, it completely disappears. So it's not distracting you. The other thing is you're not going to be tapping and swiping and doing whatever you might do like you did with Google Glass. There's no camera here. It's meant to be non-intrusive, non-annoying in social situations. But you can do little subtle things. Like if a notification comes in and you want to read it, you can just kind of look over and it'll slide in or you can dismiss it like that. Vaughn glasses are a prototype project from Intel's new devices group. And later this year, developers are going to be able to start using them. 
Now, they do need to be fitted to your eye's interpupillary distance so that the display can actually line up to your eyeball. So we went into Intel's lab in San Francisco to try them out. Take a look. Tell me what you see. I, uh, whoa, I, I see a red. <laughs> I see an incoming call from CEO Brian Krasanich. Ah! You gotta take that. <laughs> it fits in your face and it's basically, it's it's a heads up display. Uh, it's just displaying some red text here mm -hmm. that I'm just seeing right below my standard line of vision. Mm -hmm. How on earth is this thing showing me a heads up display? Because I don't see it on the glasses. In fact, I don't even, oh, right there. Mm -hmm. I can finally see this thing is projecting into my eye. That's right. What, That's how right. is it, is it, is it, is it a laser? Like, what's the story there? It is a Vixel. A Vixel. Uh, yep. What is, it, what is a Vixel? Vertical cavity surface emitting laser. Is this a safe thing to have? Absolutely. It's so low power, it's, it's at the very bottom end of a class one laser. We had to integrate very, very power efficient light sources, MEMS devices for actually painting an image. Uh, we use a holographic grating embedded in the lens to reflect the correct wavelengths back to your eye. The image is called retinal projection. So the image is actually painted into the back of your retina. If you wear prescription glasses, the prescription is used for looking at the world, but not for the image we send you. You can have terrible vision and still see bright, sharp, clear image that looks like it comes from infinity. I know what you're thinking. A thing that shows notifications in my eyeball all the time is awful. And Intel is very aware that you think that's awful. So they're trying to be really smart about the stuff that it shows you. It's trying to only show you really contextually important information. When these things are available to buy, what is it gonna do? Like what sort of things is it gonna enable? Is it just gonna be, you know, all my Twitter mentions rolling in, in my eye all the time? Because that sounds awful. It's not. Okay. As you're walking around and standing where you are, that restaurant or that restaurant, which one has a better Yelp review? As I'm leaving my car, getting instructions to where I was actually going, not where I parked. Simple things that are, you're in the kitchen, you're cooking, you can go, Alexa, uh, I need that recipe for cookies. Mm -hmm. And it just appears on your glasses. We are providing uh, a level of behavioral AI to our system that allows us to figure out what to show you when. Why would I feel like I need a pair of smart glasses, especially when I could also get like a smart watch that can also show me notifications all the time? Uh, when I saw the first um, smartphone, mm -hmm. I didn't go and say, wow, ride sharing, that's gonna happen. But the fact is ride sharing would have never happened without smartphones. We're excited about this because it enables new use cases for developers to come up with. To try to figure out what all those use cases could be, Later this year, Intel will open an early access program so developers can get units and start making stuff that works with the Vaunt. By the way, it should work with both Android and iPhones. And throughout this whole process, Intel will continue to develop its own companion app and AI, and it will release more prototypes with different eyeglass styles. But then what happens? Why is Intel making smart eyeglasses? These are incredibly difficult to make. Okay. The electronics in here are incredibly compact. Uh, the ASICs that we have included are of our own design. The apps processor is our own as well. Uh, just the whole thing is custom. Right. In order to fit in this package. Okay. So you're Intel, you can do that crazy stuff, right. but just because you can. Doesn't mean you should. So why? Yes, I think BK has been quoted to say data is the new oil. I think other people say somewhat similar things. The point is you have to consume that data somehow. So not only do we want to manage the data and help you compute in the data center with Intel servers and all that other stuff, we also we, we want, to, want to be part of presenting that data to you in a way that you can consume. So that's what we do. This. Right, so I just want to be clear, when you, when you say that uh, Intel thinks of data like oil, this, this thing isn't about like collecting a whole bunch of biometrics from no. it, right? It's, it's about taking all the data. Intel wants to be part of the story of, there's a million pieces right. of data that might be useful to me and Intel wants to be in that flow right. of the data in a way that it hasn't been before. So here's the bet with Vaunt. You want smart glasses, maybe you don't, who knows, but you definitely don't want glasses that are big and ugly and techy. And so you have to get over that hump of, are you willing to put technology on your face? And the magic here is they've made that hump that you need to get over. Do you want tech on your face? Totally easy, like this is fine. This is not a thing that I'm worried about wearing. And once you get past that issue of, is this a thing that I would be willing to wear? Then it's possible that there could be a whole bunch of emergent ideas that could come. These will hook you because of what they provide you, because how they can win over those constraints that other heavier screens can't, or they 
ask you for too much. Arriving at the grocery store, both hands on the cart, eyes scanning the um, aisles for the products we need. And we have the shopping list somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but now we have it here. So those are very big dreams, but will the tech actually work? These prototype glasses definitely do, but it's going to be up to software developers to make them actually useful. And maybe more importantly, do you remember how smartphones changed how we all talk to each other? What do you think smart glasses are going to do? Will we accept that the people we're talking to might be reading Facebook on their glasses when we're just trying to have a dinner conversation? You can't really tell when somebody is paying attention to something on a vaunt. Only the person wearing the glasses can see it. We're a little ways from needing to worry about those social questions. But whether Intel releases smart glasses first or somebody else beats them to the punch, this technology is definitely coming. So I'm talking to you right now and you feel like you mean so much uh -huh. to me, but I'm actually playing. Wow. Wow. I am really like totally fascinated by this. I think this is fantastic. I think this is really, really awesome. It seems like you guys also think this is great. But now please do let me know in the live stream if you would buy it. For how much would you buy it? At what price point would you say, you know what, that is so cool, that is okay for me now to jump in now. If they were available now on Amazon.com, at which price point would you say, yes, I'm, order I'm ordering them now with Amazon Prime, they're going to be um, in at home tomorrow. Please do let me know. Tell me, what price would you pay for the Vaunt glasses. And Brandon says $150. All right. Yeah, for $150, I would buy them as well. I think I would, for me, no, I will wait a bit. What you, what you have to say. Okay. Push the button, $199. Ghost Camp says, I think it's what you need in your AFK and in the real world is very useful. Its job is kind of like the Apple Watch, but much cooler and more efficient. I would definitely buy this, but he said it's difficult and difficult seems pricey. Mofan says, since I pay around 300 for my glasses anyways, why not 600? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Mo. Makes sense, right? Since we are, yeah, I also wear glasses normally, like, they look like this and glass to buy glasses here in Germany is a very, very expensive. Exactly. We pay like, I don't know, 300, 400 euros. I would pay 600 as well then. Exactly. Run Dune says 249 Canadian dollars. Probably this is around what? 200 in the US. Yep. They're definitely worth like 500. No way anyone will sell that low yet. I would love to see 150 or 200, Sebastian. Okay, yeah. If it was 500, I'm not interested, says Brandon. Ilya Sol says, it would be cool if you can add them to existing glasses. Yeah, that would be cool. Absolutely, yeah. Probably they're going to do something like that because it seems like just one part has this laser um, in it. And Ilya Souls just advanced to level three. Congratulations. <laughs> and Randun, yeah, okay. So ZK Nightlight says 400, a good starting point. Okay, so <laughs> I think the future is wide open for AR glasses. You guys are willing to pay 200, $250 and Cyrus would buy them for 400. Wow, getting more and more, it's an auction here. Okay, one, two, three, and the AR glasses go to Cyrus. So the technology, the technology is, um, yeah, they said like it's not, um, it's very difficult and complicated. So probably it's going to be a bit pricey, but you know what? They are not putting a whole a full color picture into your eye, right? It's just this red thing. It's just the laser. They just put the laser directly into your eye, which kind of sounds scary first, but they say it should be all right. So honestly speaking, I don't think it's going to be like super expensive. It's, it's, it's just a laser that they put into your eyes. And um, so they start 
low. They they don't want to put like the whole picture into your eye, like like the um, Magic Leap One, right? The Magic Leap One, yes, it's color, it's awesome, it's like the perfect thing they say. But this is more on the low end side, honestly speaking, right? This is more just putting some context information into your eyes. So this is only like this few red dots <laughs> which form some information and i don't think it's going to be super expensive honestly speaking i really hope it could be like 200 or 300 dollars obviously i will get it <laughs> and um of course i will tell you all about it and let me tell you why i'm so excited about ar and especially those ar glasses that don't make you look like um complete idiots so the magic leap one probably is going to be exciting but it looks kind of funky and you're not going to wear it outside, right? But this device, the Vaunt, yes, I would wear it because people who are not as tech savvy as you and me, they won't know that I'm wearing some fancy AR glasses and that I'm probably reading the news right now while I'm talking with them. So this excites me. This is one thing. And then the next thing is, is going to be, um, yeah, it's, it's simply useful. Just as they said, if, if, if I'm driving, for example, I have my hands on the steering wheel or yeah, I'm, uh, I just want some context information, but I don't want to get my phone out. Of course, it's simple to get the phone out, but well, why would I want to do so if I directly get the news into my eye directly? I think that is so useful. And, and in general, let me tell you why AR is going to be so big. There's going to be a layer on our world a layer which is going to be projected on our world let's say we go to the supermarket and we look at a product and we don't have to look for the price yeah you know sometimes we look oh where's the price no it's going to pop up on top of it this is the price or um yeah we're walking um, through the city and we look at different restaurants and directly it will say okay yeah this has uh, 4.2 stars on yelp and this has 4.1 stars on Yelp and everything will be directly there. It will be a layer on top of the real world. Or you're driving your car. It will show you, okay, Sebastian, you're going 200 um, kilometers per hour and probably you should speed down because here it's only 130. So all this contextual information is going to be a layer on top of, the, of our world. And this is simply going to be so huge. This is going to be the most important thing coming up very very soon and i believe that this vaunt glasses are only the first step the big question is going to be which layer are you going to use are you going to use the facebook layer are you going to use the google layer or are you going to use probably the intel layer and now i'm telling you now this big war which is going to happen now we're going to see the first step so that's why intel is doing that because they want to be, they want to have like a, a foot in the door of this big thing. Which AR layer are, going, are you going to use? Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. Which, which AR layer are you going to use? Probably Google. I have a feeling they're going to be very strong with it. Think about Google Maps, how strong they are, they are already with that kind of augmented news with Google Maps. They are so strong, I really believe that um yeah that this is going to be that google is going to be very strong with ar and believe me ar is going to be super super huge the next revolution after the smartphone this is going to be bigger than the smartphone this is going to be everywhere and we all are going to use it and in 10 years in 10 years from now on mrtv I'm going to show you a video. I'm going to show you this video, this moment. I'm going to play it in 10 years on this channel. And I'm going to tell you, guys, I had so much hair. <laughs> and I'm also going to tell you, you know what? I told you that. I told you that before. I told you that 10 years ago. Cheers. Okay, ghost camp, <laughs> guys record, don't need to record, this here is going to be on, um, 
you can you can later see that on the channel this is being recorded already <laughs> zk nightlight holy beer yes <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> Okay, so in 10 years, yeah, I'm going to show you this here on the channel and we're going to, I'm going to say, I told you guys, I told you 10 years ago that this is going to happen. And probably, yeah, I don't know which layer, which AR layer everybody's going to use. I think it's going to be Google. I have, I really have the feeling it's going to be Google. But who knows, probably Intel, probably Intel is going to be the most important company because they they are so visionary now with their Vaughn glasses and I'm going to get them. Hopefully they're going to be around $200, probably a bit more. We will not, we will know. And then, yeah, anyways, yeah, we're waiting for eye lenses. Push the button says, <laughs> all right, but now let's get to the next news item. <laughs> Mo, Mo fun says, can't wait, wish we can forspulen which is German and means uh, fast forward, fast forward 10 years. Oh yeah, Mo, Mo, Mo's channel will be very huge in 10 years and hopefully mine as well. So Lauritz says, so many practical applications, which would be a great selling point for education and so on. Of course, Lauritz, it's going to be everywhere in the classroom, everywhere we're going, everywhere we're going to have this additional information layer on top of the real world everywhere i can think of any situation in the restaurant we go to the restaurant we can directly see the menu we can directly choose it in the air like that, that, that. anything 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 is going to be affected by ar so yeah it's going to be just the biggest thing believe me i will show that in 10 years okay but now, yeah, <laughs> waiting for time machine says push the button. Randoon says, have you played Titans of Space? No, I haven't. And um, Soundlove says, could be a great supportive thing for autistic people, of course. Also for people who cannot see very well. And yeah, speak the truth, brother, says Lauritz. Okay. All right, but now we should go to the next news item because this show is already one hour long. So the next news item is... All right, Perception Neuron 2.0 launches with improved body tracking. This is the last hardware news that I have for you. So Perception Neuron is a company that offers these here, this kind of kit. So you strap on these straps here that you see and then you know what your body will be perfectly tracked within vr or if you need that for some other application you can simply track all your body movements if you want to make a cool game or if you want to make um, some cool special effects for a video now with perception neuron 2.0 you can get this you can get this kit it's available now it's from a chinese speaking company from, from a chinese company and this set will set you back $1,500. Now you will think, oh, 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 this is expensive. But no, it's not expensive because this is not really meant for consumers. This is meant for people who, yeah, who are doing video games, who are doing um, movies and stuff. And before, if you want to have this kind of system, this kind of body tracking system, you had to pay tens of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. So $1,500 is a great price for this kind of for this kind of system. So you can get it now. So $1,500 is incredible. It's, a, it's really a good price. So Perception Neuron, I, I wish you all the best with that. Of course, you could also get the HTC Vive trackers for like $300, but then you only have a few of these points. So with Perception Neuron, you will get like um, 32 points are being tracked and they are being perfectly tracked. This is pretty awesome. If you get the Vive trackers, well, you have a couple of points depending on how many Vive trackers you get. It's also already not bad. Like if you want to have like um, some games already support this kind of body tracking uh, with, with, the, with the HTC Vive trackers, you have to check out um, Sui Viver's channel. Sui Viver is a very, very, very cool YouTuber and he has the, tr the trackers 
Um, and also like Voodoo, he's a German YouTuber. He also has some of these HTC Vive trackers and they both have tried games where they have full body tracking with the HTC Vive trackers and they love it. So I haven't checked it out. Probably I also should check it out. So this is definitely something very cool, something for the near future, whole body tracking. And Perception Neuron makes it possible for $1,500 um, to get perfect, perfect body tracking. And I think this is pretty awesome. Okay, guys, at what price would you, would you buy the Perception Neuron? To what price does it have to go down if this brings you perfect body tracking in your favorite VR games? Please do let me know what kind of uh, price you would be willing to pay. Oh, what do you think about this $600 ghost camp? Wow, you would be willing to pay $600 for it. Okay. Brandon, with haptic feedback? No, this is really only for capturing. Randoon, $599. Hmm. Official Andy would pay 1K. Okay, so you would be willing to pay quite some money. I think for me, it would be Probably I'd be willing to pay $200, I think. But I would need this to be, um, I would need this to be supported in all of the games and especially in the multiplayer games. Yeah, so people would, would see you. Well, Randoon says for him, body, full body tracking is not that important. Yeah, only 200, I think I would pay for it. Because at the moment, I haven't really tried it out. How awesome that might be. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really have to see it in action. I wouldn't pay like more, more 600 at the moment. Well, anyways. Okay, now let's go to the next. Um, let's go to the next uh, news item here. So that was, I think that was the last hardware news item. Oh yes, oh yes, Sprint Vector, oh my goodness. Sprint Vector launched last week and guys, I love it. For all of you who don't know yet what Sprint Vector is, Sprint Vector is a running game. It's like you race against um, seven other people in VR and you race by like making funny movements with your hands. Probably you have seen my hands-on review um, last week this game is simply incredible and you have to buy that game it will cost you 23 euros right now it's a fantastic price it's simply incredible and now let's have a look at the trailer ladies and gentlemen beasts and monsters the moment you have all been waiting for is finally upon us welcome one and all to the sprint vector championship intergalactica i have gathered here today the galaxy's most skilled contestants to compete for your viewing pleasure did they come here for vengeance do they fight for love do they hope to earn their freedom is it for money no matter what the prize may be they all come here to win
sprint vector. You have to get it now. <laughs> I say that so clear because this is one of my very, very favorite games. You know, I always love racing games. I love Mario Kart, but this is like Mario Kart where you really have to um, put in some action. So I was playing that game so much recently and it's, it's just so good. I don't even know what to say. You have to get this. Please check out my um, check out my hands-on review. This is fantastic. It's so much fun. You have time trials, so you can try to be as fast as possible. You have um, like challenges. You have like multiplayer where you can play against uh, the AI, of course, but you can also play online against um, seven other people. And this is just goodness. So after this stream is over, we're going to play Sprint Vector together. So. If you want to play Sprint Vector against me, then go and um, join the MRTV Discord server, click on the link in the description and go to the multiplayer requests um, place in, in the Discord. Because there you will find all the details after this live stream is over, we're all going to play Sprint Vector. And this is simply just so good. I love this game. And let me, let me check what you guys are saying. So Elias Souls says, looks really fun. Yes, great. And more fun says, he has not bought it on the computer yet on the PC because he first wants to play it on the PSVR and it will come out on Monday night. And he is hyped. Yes, Mo, you can be super hyped. You can be super, super hyped. You will love that. I'm telling you, you will love the shit out of this. I. Wow, I can't even tell you guys how much I love it. So I want to I want to show you something funny. You really look funny when you play that game. And um, yeah, I recently I recently looked really really funny when I was playing that game. So I was playing that game, and then uh, my wife she was in the same room. And then after I finished playing, she said, Sebastian, you know what? You look ridiculous when you play what you're playing right now. And then I told her, yeah, yeah, sprint vector. You have to look like this. You have to be as fast as possible. And yeah, it's, it's just so good. And then she told me, Sebastian, you know what? I filmed you. And I said, no, what? You filmed me? And yeah, and you know what? I'm going to show you that right now, coming up. Oh. Yeah, so this is how you look when you play the game. And then it's even more funny because, well, I hear all the sounds, look at this. I hear all the sounds. Um, on the headphones, right? So it must be so funny. It must have been so funny for my wife to see me there. She she doesn't she didn't know in what context I'm playing uh, what I'm playing there right now, and I'm just like going crazy in that. And then she just took her phone, and then she was just uh, yeah filming me. It is ridiculous. It looks so funny, and I simply wanted to show you that. Yeah, let me go back. Funny, right? <laughs> what do you think so this is really really good stuff so sprint vector go and get it and well if you want to run against me please please do check out um, the MRTV discord server and um, yeah go to the multiplayer request thing and then add me on Steam okay Add me on Steam and then after this live stream is over, I'm going to do the first Sprint Vector session with you guys. Looking forward to race against you. Very, very nice. <laughs> I think you guys find it funny. Yes. <laughs> great, great. You like it. That's good. Good to know. Yeah. Elias Soul says with the Odyssey. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing this with the Odyssey. Dance like, dance like if nobody sees you, ZK Nightlight says. Exactly, yeah, so this is just incredible. Good, so Sprint Vector, please get it. And you know what, I'm thinking about, um, I'm thinking about doing some really interesting things. 
um, for Sprint Vector. I'm thinking about doing some competitions, some time trials with you where you have to beat me on that. So you know what? Get this game. Get this game. This game is simply awesome. So Sprint Vector, after this live, um, after this live stream is over, we're going to play it together. So please get it. And Mo, you can look forward to Monday and uh, I know you're going to love it. Probably we can play it against each other when you get it on Monday and I can join your, your German live stream probably for running. That would be nice. So, yeah, there's voice chat. Yes, absolutely, there is voice chat. Okay. Yeah, there was Sprint Vector, yeah? So let's go to the next news item. What do you think? Oh, okay. Now we, we go to the next news item, which is the real or real, not sure, raises 11 million for VR broadcasting platform. So what is V real? Now V real is something really, really exciting, something super exciting. V real they want to be the Twitch for VR. As you know, Twitch, you can kind of broadcast your gameplay and people are going to watch it and things are really interesting. And yeah, but V real is different. So what is V real? I could I could play, for example, um, Sprint Vector and you can watch me play Sprint Vector, but not on a screen. You would watch me in your VR headsets. So you could watch me play Sprint Vector or for example here, this is Gorn, a great game that I can really um, recommend to you. So you are there in VR with me when I play those games. And isn't that pretty awesome? What do you guys think? What do you guys think of, the, of this? Would you like me to play stuff in VR and then be there in VR instead of watching it on YouTube? I don't know. What do you think? Is that cool or would you prefer to watch me on YouTube or would you prefer to be in VR and really watch me play the stuff? I would like to know your opinion. Fail Runner. Would it be 2D, 3D or 360? Fail Runner. It would be as if you play that game as if you stand next to me or like here with Gorn as if you're sitting in the spectators lounge. Is that cool? Cyrus says, yes, 100%. This is so cool. <laughs> Ghost Camp says, I think Twitch will do something similar and still stay on the throne. Could be. I don't know. By the way, are you guys using Twitch? Do you want me to, to um, stream on Twitch my live gameplay sessions? I'm, I haven't really looked into it. <laughs> I must be honest with you guys. Any release date? Yeah, they're working on it right now. And actually there are some beta versions already going on. So um, yeah, but you know what? So, so they have just raised 11.7 million, which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Sound love says, will we get from the beer then? Yeah, probably yes. So yeah, um, this is pretty cool. And they have just raised 11.7 11, 11 million to make this a reality. Actually, it's already there, but they want to make it perfect. And they simply just got 11 million. Awesome, right? Okay, and then um, Cyrus says, Twitch is very cool and we'll get more people to see Sebastian as well. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Probably then I should do it. And Eliasol says, yes, that would be cool and yeah probably i should think about it <laughs> and lauritz says awesome idea could be cool for tournaments even with mrtv yeah probably this is something pretty incredible all right so now i would like to tell you what's even more cool about this article and what i really love about this article <laughs> Red and Heaven's Choir, exactly. So um, what's cool about this article is that they have linked the video of 
Cass and Cherry, Cass and Cherry using VReel. And I'm going to show you that video in a moment. So Cass and Cherry is an awesome VR channel. It's an awesome channel. It's two pretty ladies who are loving VR and who are playing VR. And yeah, I met them in Stockholm recently and uh, we, yeah, I really like them very much. And um, you have to check out their YouTube channel. They have an awesome YouTube channel. They do so cool gameplay videos. Sometimes they would now even act some, some, some interesting acts. So you really, really have to check out their channel. Cass and Cherry, if you're watching this later, hi, I was so glad to meet you in Stockholm and I'm sure we're going to meet each other either in the Netherlands or in Germany soon. So I've put their, um, their a link to their YouTube channel in the description below. And now I'm going to um, show you, I'm going to show you um, their video. All right, I'm going to show you their video where, where they check out VReal. Going to be here in a moment and here we go. Who's calling me? Oops. Hello? I need to poke out his eyes. This is what you need for that as well. So I need if you have two pencils, you can just try doing this. Hello strangers, today we're going to show you guys what we have been up to during TwitchCon. We have been testing and trying out Vireal, a new VR streaming platform. And we're very excited to show you guys what you can do with this because this is going to be a new way of streaming and recording VR. I'm excited to show you guys this. So let's turn on virtual reality. All right, guys, we're finally here. The Vireal video that I wanted to show you guys. I'm excited to show you guys all the possibilities in this in app. First of all, let me pause this gameplay because right now I'm inside the pre-recorded version of uh, Cherry playing Surgeon Simulator. And what I can do right now is watch, re-watch the pre-recorded stream and then record it using Vireal and using all kinds of different angles. Let me show you guys what I mean. Let me unpause this game for a sec. Now Cherry is playing the game, right? And I am going to move around and look at her play in Hello. all kinds of different angles <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool we are in surgeon sim now. Surgeon now let me pause this for a second show you guys what you can do now keep in mind though that this app right now is in pre-alpha version so it's not perfect yet and a lot of updates are gonna come um, based on the feedback that a lot of people gave during TwitchCon but right now what you can do here you can actually place cameras I can add cameras, place it using this viewpoint. I can see if it's placed right. Let me just place another camera over there. Maybe as a tiny person. Add camera using the menu button and then the touchpad to add the camera. So let me see. I really I can also move this so I can keep looking at it while I place the camera from a distance. Yeah, I like these kind of views. All right. So let me go back for a sec and show you guys a cool thing called the camera control board. So this is actually where you can see all the cameras that I placed. As you can see, I have placed a couple of cameras over there, this one over there, and you can see them all there. And the last one that I placed is over here, right? So what I can do here is place like different viewpoints onto the live version, so I can swap it over there. And now it's live. And as you can hear, the sound became louder because uh, the camera over there is closer to the, the game sound. So there's definitely some directional audio going on here. What I can do now is, place, is uh, play the stream, the gameplay. And you know what? You know what? <laughs> I can feel like a real movie director. Oh, no. Oh, this is a good feel, good. placing it to life. Oh, and now people will see this on the recording or on the stream, oh, yeah. whatever you're doing. And I think that's pretty awesome. Here, there we go. Another one. You see, pretty cool. Let me pause this for a sec again, because later on, guys, I'm going to show you guys a final version that Cherry and I both recorded together using this. 
and playing Surgeon Simulator, which I think is pretty fun because uh, we've never shown Surgeon Simulator on our channel before. So I think that's pretty cool. And I can show you guys all the possibilities that you have with this app, what I'm really excited about. But let me show you guys another thing first. You can actually also change the avatar of the viewer, of me. I'm, I'm this right now, this is me. And you have different kinds of avatars and colors, like the panda has different colors, and this, for example. Imagine a lot of your viewers <laughs> coming inside oh, the stream with you and having okay. all kinds of different avatars and recording your stream all together. Right. Film her face, Cherry's face. Hello. You know what I love? That, you, that I actually can see your mouth moving. That's so hello, cute. hello. Can you see my mouth moving? I, yes, I can see your mouth. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> I'm kidding. Stop talking. Is that me? I know. I mean like that. Oh, I look mean. at that. Look at my small camera board over here. That's so cute. Oh my god. So what you also can do is. Okay, guys, I think uh, that's enough. I think you got now the idea of be real, really cool, fantastic. I think it's very understandable why they got 11.7 million in seed in funding right now to finish this. This is going to be very exciting for yeah for me and for all the other VR YouTubers. And uh, yeah, I think we're all going to use it because, well, you can be there when we play that e either live or either either yeah recorded so that's awesome also you know now that uh, Cass and Cherry have an awesome VR channel so if you're watching this live right now or even if you're watching that later in the recording please do go to Cass and Cherry subscribe and click the bell button so you don't miss their videos I don't want to miss any of their videos and you also shouldn't miss any of their videos it's so much fun alrighty that's it. That's what I have for you guys today. Thank you all for watching this. Let me let me say how did you like how did you like today's live stream? Please do let me know in the live stream. Let me know what you thought about today's episode, episode number 4 of MRTV Live. Please do let me know in the live stream so I can have some parting words here with you before I stop this channel and before I'm going to um, go to the other room, which is my VR playing room. And um, before we can all meet each other in the multiplayer request um, channel on the MRTV Discord server. If you're not yet on the MRTV Discord server, go there. It is so good. You will meet me and you will meet all the others there. Like push the button, Cyrus, Randoon, Ghost Camp. Brandon and all the others and it's simply so much fun It's really a fantastic discord server. It's very very good <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be very much fun. So um, what do you guys say? so <laughs> Randoon says it was good life. It was a good live stream. It was my first one and I loved it great Randoon perfect Cyrus says very cool first time tuning in live and I enjoy it a lot nice So I really hope that week by week we can get more and more live viewers My first goal is to get hundred people who are watching this concurrently live and I think we're not far away from that This channel is growing so fast guys. This channel is go growing so fast and uh, I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you that um, you sub subscribe to this channel hopefully you also click the bell button so you don't miss anything and um, yeah i'm really thankful and grateful that you subscribe to this channel without you this wouldn't be possible and our next goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers and we're going to reach that yeah sooner or later <laughs> we're now somewhere at six six thousand two hundred i think but really growing fast we're really growing very very fast it is so good to see that. Thank you. And you can help. You can share my videos. I'm going to do some very interesting stuff with Sprint Vector soon. Yeah, be excited. There's going to be some very exciting things about Sprint Vector on this channel very soon. And I'd be happy if you share it. Share it with your VR friends, with people who are excited about VR and AR. Tell them about this channel. Tell them about Sebastian's MRTV server and the youtube channel and yeah it would be great to grow to 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible push the button says great 
Brandon says, Livestream was perfect. Thank you, Brandon. All the best to Australia. Great to have you on. Fail Runner seems to like it too. Becca, good live stream. Becca, nice to see you here. And ZK Nightlight says, good job in this episode as always. Ghost Camp, great work, Sap. Thank you. Keep this live stream up and add a donation feature so we can support the stream. This is a very, very good idea, Ghost Camp. And yeah, I will, I will, um, hopefully soon I will be, um, I will get the YouTube okay to monetize my channel. I didn't get that yet. It seems to take very long now for YouTube to say, okay, that I can monetize the channel. I haven't done so yet because of that, but soon probably you can donate a bit. Yeah, I like the free thumbs up. So probably get some donations. That would be incredible and would be very happy, of course. Lauritz says, same from here, first timer on the live stream and you really feel connected and that you can really interact. Yes, this is really the point of MRTV Live. I didn't want to do a show where I just, yeah, go through the news alone and tell you my opinions. I really want to interact with you. That's, that's the special thing about MRTV Live and I really love this show and looking forward to next Saturday already to, um, yeah, to go for MRTV Live number five. Fail Runner, I signed up just for you. Thank you, Fail Runner. Official Andy, are we playing now? Yes, Official Andy, finally, you had to wait so long, but it's also good because Sprint Vector could download. You told us that, um, yeah, that it takes longer for you to download stuff. Yeah, more fun VR, looking forward to play with you also soon. And uh, sound love says Sebastian, thanks and alles Gute, great. <laughs> Just keep posting and YouTube will reward you with recommendations. Yeah, not so sure about that one because I'm using, I'm drinking adult beverages and stuff. Probably YouTube doesn't like me because of that. But well, if you like me, that's good enough for me. And if you share it, that will be good enough. And more fun, yes. All right, okay, that's it. That's it for this live stream. What's going to happen next is, of course, the live player, the live um, session. We're going to play. Um, we're going to play Sprint Vector now together. So please go to the multiplayer request channel now and check the pinned message. Check the pinned message um, and join the community, the um, Steam community. Find me there and add me as a friend on Steam. So if you want to join the Sprint, Vector, the Sprint Vector live action now, you have to add me as a friend now. I will go to my VR playroom now. I will give myself a 10 minutes break because it's kind of exhausting to talk one hour and 30 minutes live. So I'll give myself 10 minutes break and then I'm going to add you into a Sprint Vector or add you as a friend if you send me the request and then we're going to run, okay? Looking very much forward to it. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. Again, it was a pleasure. I'm looking forward to see you next week. Next week, Saturday, again, 11 p.m. German time. And yeah, have a good night. And hopefully see you in Sprint Vector now. All right. But that's really it. If you loved this live stream, then give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not subscribed, to Mixed Reality TV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye. You have to find the stop streaming button.